story time, story time, story time, story time, story time, story time. Good day to you and welcome to the birthday tribute to the late great Randolph Samuel Williams, Mass Ran. Brought to you courtesy of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, the JCDC in Manchester. My name is Vivian Morris and I am your host for today. Today marks the birth date of Randolph Williams, popularly called Ranny Williams, Mass Ran, and also Manpon Spot. He, known of course, as the man for all seasons, was a superb actor, playwright, uh, conversationalist, and also, as we will hear later, a member of the UNIA, the organization established by the first national hero of Jamaica, the right excellent Marcus Mazziah Garvey. Today marks the birth date of the late Mass Ran, and so we're taking time out to highlight his wonderful work and his amazing life as we express gratitude for his remarkable contribution to Jamaican culture. Mass Ran was born in Colon, Panama on October 26, 1912. He came to Jamaica at the age of six with his mother. He lived in Kingston for a while and the rest of his childhood was spent in Williamsfield, St. Catherine. He attended Tutorial College, Calabar High School, and Kingston Technical High School. Ronnie Williams was a dramatist and a comedian. He first started his acting career as a child, reciting poetry at church, lodge halls, and school rooms. He achieved professional status in 1930, when he was invited by the right excellent Marcus Messiah Garvey, national hero. He wasn't national hero then, but he was invited by Mr. Garvey to become a member of the vaudeville group at Edelweiss Park and to organize entertainment for the thousands of people who attended events there. Several productions at the park have been listed as having been originated by Randolph Williams. Mars Rand and Lee Gordon became a formidable duo known as Amos and Andy and together they went on to appear in the second little theater movement pantomime, Babes in the Wood. Rani and Lee provided a great deal of comic relief in the topicalities or knockabout section which facilitated scene changing in the pantomime. Ronnie Williams was a natural, natural theater star. He was the host of the Ronnie Williams show on television, which premiered in 1963. And his films include A High Wind in Jamaica, Oh Dad, Poor Dad, White Souls, Jamaica No Problems, Tropical Isles, Zach Experience, and the Marijuana Affair. Along with Lee Gordon, he had a series of shows on ZQI, Jamaica's first radio station, which began operating at the beginning of World War II. He shared the spotlight in the radio review Morgi and Putus with Alma Mokien, at the time she was Alma Hilton. At the same time, he had another radio show called Hello, you out there. And he developed the Lou and Rani show for the opening of the JBC radio station in 1959. Though a born dramatist, he really came into his own when he began playing Bra Nancy, which started when Louise Bennett and Noel Vaz created a Nancy and Busha Blackbeard. His partnership with Louise Bennett was legendary to the extent where many persons, even unto this day, believe somewhere in their minds that Masran and Miss Lou were more than an acting duo. People believed that they were married, that they were husband and wife. 
We're going to take a look now at a video with Mas Ran and his beloved Miss Lou. Ah, oh, mistress, you know that although I'm a sailor... With a woman in every port. Ah, uh, but I'm true only to you. If you see me wink my eye, two a wench is passing by. Though a wench is passing by, is not she. Is who? Is you. Be true. Mm-hmm. When I say me love me, dear. You are dashing privateer. You are calling him love and dear. Is not him. Is who? Are you? Be true. Mm -hmm. True only to you. Oh, true, true only, only to you. No, no matter, matter what, what I might do, what I do, what I do it, when I do it, do it only to you. If you see me walk and kiss an enchanting little miss. Lord enchanting little miss is not she. Is me. He he. Is me. He he. Lovers love to love and spoon. Underneath the tropic moon. All the lovers loving and spooning is not them. Is who? Is me. Is me and you. But Morgan, you can't go to Panama. Oh, but why? I don't finish knit your socks. Anytime I say I'm free for a man to marry me, is that any ordinary man I mean? Is who? Are you? Mm-mm. Come on. Morgan. Morgan. Masran became somewhat of a pillar of pantomime. He wrote two pantomimes, Jamaica Way and Quashy Lady adapted Robinson Crusoe and is listed as co-writer for Queenie's Daughter and Breda Buck and he performed in over 29 stagings of the annual Jamaica's National Pantomime. But who is this Jamaican man from Colon and St. Catherine and Manchester? Let's take a visit to his family tree as we sit with his niece, Mrs. Doris Jones. Mrs. Doris Jones, I, I like to call her Lady Doris. She is uh, an icon in her own right. Um, the, the Grand Dame of the Parish of Manchester and the town of Mandeville. <laughs> and uh, a precious niece of the late, great Randolph Masran Williams. And Mrs. Jones, you, of course, you knew that man. We have, we have known of him, we have seen him in action, but you knew the man. You grew up knowing the man intimately. And so, as I welcome you to this program, may I invite you to tell us a little bit about Masran, the private Masran, the one most of us never got a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lady Viv. <laughs> it is so good to share this spotlight, as it were, with you. Um, Mas Ran, my uncle. Mas Ran, man pan spot. Mr. Captain Morgan, Elisa da Haberdashri, Rani and Miss Lou, duo. The Kwashi Lady, King of Kwashi Lady and all the other characters in the pantomime that goes with it represents the public life of Ronnie Williams. But he had an enigmatic quality which kept his public life separate from his private life. It's almost as if both were in different compartments. And so there are so much, so many things that persons would not know. Some of them have been said before and it's amazing or surprising for some persons to know that at school, Calabar and um, tutorial, he was not a comic. He was a very student, he was a very straight student in accounting and a very straight man. It took his mother, who was a music teacher, and his brother 
to recognize the comic in him and pushed him. And that is where he started, really, at home. Just a minute before you continue, Mrs. Jones. Uh, there is something also, I think I picked up a story about his brother being more of the performing artist. Yes. Who was that brother? His brother, Roxy Roosevelt, he happens to be my father. Ranny Williams. Who was Ranny Williams? Who was he when the footlights were off? The laughter had died. The drama is over. The advertisements had come to an end. And he was alone with his family, relatives, in-laws, or close friends. Family was at the heart of Ronnie Williams. His siblings, children, seven, his brother's children, and his and the relatives and the in-laws and those. Those, that was the core of Rani. You saw a different person when he was with his family and he was home. He was a great provider and engaged in singing topical, um, you know, little courses and so on. And then he also was great at topical discourses. So when the family gathered, we would talk about things and share and, and have a great time just discussing things. We also, there was also board games and he provided taxi service, taking us to school, taking his children to school, you know, being available for my dad and so on to do that. You could always call on him, Uncle Rani, can you take us to there and so on. But our great time came at pantomime. We were always sure of a front row seat. December 26th, never failing. We look forward to it and we were very excited about it. i would always moved by the love of my uncle, his sister and his brother. There was a kind of loyalty and depth of affection that I've never seen anywhere. It, they supported each other, irrespective of what, good or bad. There was never any sign strain, even hint at a disagreement, not believing. They just had that love for each other. And that helped our family because that was the example. They loved each other irrespective of failures, whatever. They just literally, I almost they worship each other. There was an understanding between them. And as the children and grandchildren, that, that's the legacy that we have. Family. That's yes, beautiful. That's family. Education was also a huge part of who he was. A lifelong learner himself, he was always reading and updating his craft. He therefore insisted that his family did the same. Much of his philanthropy went to education. Discipline. He was a disciplinarian without being a disciplinarian. By example, and by teaching, and just showing how it is. He gave us the expectation. You, you're just expected to be a disciplined person based on the examples that he gave. And it is demonstrated in his work. He was a prolific writer. And he would spend hours preparing his craft. You know. We go to the pantomime and we see the laughter and we see, but there's a huge amount of work that goes in to that production. And it. a lot of it was at home. Okay? A lot of it was at home. And so he, as I said before, he demonstrated that discipline and all of us who were around him and all the persons, even in the work in his craft, 
recognize his discipline and they themselves just fell in line. He was punctual to a fault. If he said two o'clock, he will be there one fifty nine punctual to a fault. And as a result, he was impatient with unpunctuality. Right? He was affectionate, loving, loved to hug his children and his nieces and his siblings and you could hang on to his pockets, you know, <laughs> just to say hi. There was always something in the pockets. Right? I really loved his smile. He had this huge father's smile. It extended to all the persons around him. But as children, we just found it heartwarming. If you, it dried your tears, it cheered you up, it, it make you have this stiff upper lip, mm -hmm. all of that, because he was there and he was always smiling. Even in this, in, in reproof, there was still, it wasn't as wide, <laughs> but there was still that thing of a smell. You took a lot from him. Yeah. <laughs> so when he would reprimand you, and you say, oh, you would see that little around the corners, crinkling his eyes as if to say, I'm saying this for your own good, but I'm not, I understand. And so, so for that, we really looked. It was always genuine, and it evoked laughter because sometimes <laughs> the way he was holding his head, we knew what was coming, you know, doing something and he would and do that. And I, I, I recognize that in his plays and so on, he does the same thing. And we too could know what he's thinking by the shift of his head and the turn of his hand, Kimbo or something. So we would get prepared as well as he do that. Philanthropy. He was constantly giving to the needy raising the bar for the underprivileged. He worked in communities and the Ronnie Williams Youth Club is one of such venture. I'm not sure how it's going now, but in the Hades, even after he died, um, it was doing well, but during his lifetime, it was extremely vibrant and a lot of young men lives were changed and so on was that was the heart of his community development if one would want to say that he was also a great mentor several of today's artists can attest to that um he, Bolivar johnson and oliver samuels they will t i remember oliver definitely remember oliver yes. visiting and Granny. i know Valier was As so yeah. He was such a, a, a loving, faithful, um, how should I put it? Somebody who, who always spoke so glowingly yes. of Mas Rand. Yeah, yes. And when Mas Rand died, he, he really took it hard. Yes, yes. yes. Alma Mokien was also one of his fa close friends and fans. I would reserve Mrs. Gluden for the last. Yes because of that particular relationship. Mm -hmm. they, she was like family in the sense that he loved her the way he loved his family and yes. she loved and respected him the same way. Yes, yes. Lovely. yes. so she, he was an empathizer, huh? always moved by cruelty to, less, to the less, the less um, fortunate. And if injustice is being, out, he will speak up the plight of the disabled, battered children and animals. He was very concerned and he was very caring and involved with the hearing impaired. Yes, he was, he, he was very, very, and I think a little of that rub off on me. I have this um, love and care for the hearing impaired. Um, my, my, thrust at church is for all our young people to learn sign, sign language. language. Um, I'm thinking even at church we should have somebody there because we know we may have visitors or whatever mm -hmm. so on. Privacy. He was a very private person and very effective. As I said before, 
keeping his work and his family separate. For friendship, he was the best friend that one could have because he had such a great sense of loyalty. It didn't matter what you did, he would find a way. Sometimes we would argue, there's a danger in that, mm -hmm. but he would argue to say, we have not walked in that person's shoe. Mm -hmm. All right. So he wasn't quick to condemn, mm -hmm. and he was always trying to find a reason. Why did this happen? And um, I call it a little sleuthing, and I think I got a little of that from him because I tend to try to find out what's the score mm -hmm. first. Um, he had a great sense of style. While he wasn't what you would call a dresser himself, but his sense of style was amazing because it was he that we would, especially if we're going out together, that we would say, what do you think, Gongran? And he would say, uh-uh, do a quick change. <laughs> or he would say, that will go, you know. Good. And that was good enough. Yes. He wasn't gushing to say, oh, you look fabulous. Yes, the odd times. Yes. On special occasions, you look fabulous, you, you look fabulous you How know. How many children and do you have? Seven. And, and, and how many of them are alive? Are they all, all alive. All alive. Mm -hmm. What are their names? And we have a son. Yes, that is ooh, Norman? no Norman is his second son okay. and he has five girls okay five girls and two boys yes okay yes. so where does grace fall grace is third grace is grace in among the girls yes. grace is fourth so there's Joan um what is it now Joan no Joan Grace Francis is the last girl. Mm -hmm. Francis is oh there was there was Claudette. That's mm -hmm. the first girl that died. Oh she died. And then there is Joan and then there is Grace mm -hmm. and then there is um Francis. Mm -hmm. Somebody's missing, I'm not sure. Yes. Um but and they are the two boys. Right? So they, so they're, oh, Norman, Norman and Earl, those are the two boys, mm -hmm. right? The Garveyite, um, he was a Garveyite, as was said before, and he was also a nationalist. The Maroons and, the, and their culture was all part of his interest and thinking, and Garvey's teaching ran very deep in Ankaran. We learned a lot from him, he shared, because his brother, Roxy, who is my father, they were, as I said before, very close. So many nights, even after, he would come to the house, I was small, we would have more on that, and they would discuss, and all the Garvey readings and books and stuff, you know? And so we learned a lot. Um, and we heard a lot. Mm -hmm. And he really, really felt that. And I know he was very happy when we, uh, Marcus Garvey became our hero because he was always a hero to him. Yes. Right? And they were, we were, they were always going down to um, that house they have in downtown Kingston, where the Garveyites yeah. would meet, yes, and so on. So, yes, gifts. His gift for comedy, he had these gifts. Gifts for comedy, drama, art, literary writing, and his speech was impeccable. Not saying anything about Patoa, but the Queen's English was his forte, and what he would want heard around <laughs> him. And that was the same for his siblings, because there, he, he really, there were really 12 children that was born mm -hmm. to his parents. Okay. But it was at the time of yellow fever, mm -hmm. and they had to run with the four. Oh. Fessy, who is who event from Panama. From Panama. Oh, I see. So it was the three, the four, four children, three boys and one girl who that survived. came that, that survived. Oh. Right. So. 
Fessy migrated to, this, to Chicago. So it was just the three together all of the time. Okay. Right. So, and then eventually his sister, one sister, she went to the States. So it was just uncle and, and daddy. Yeah. Yeah. So they had, to be close. They, they had to be close. And there was always this conversation and the children and everybody. Yeah. Um, I always remember his courage when he lost his leg but to diabetes. I saw the true measure of the man. It's amazing, you know, when you're in the limelight and the glitter and all of that and everybody is around you, there is always friends. But when you're in a hospital bed with one leg, the scene changes. And I saw the strength of him. I remember visiting, visiting him once. And he was trying on the prosthetic leg. Okay. He didn't see me. And I saw the agony and the pain on his face, which made me not go forward. Yeah. I just stood there because I was feeling it too. And then suddenly he realized that somebody, and he looked up and he saw me. And he had the biggest smile on his face. And he said, Nisi. And I, I could hardly speak mm. because I saw what happened before. Yes. And then I saw the real man. He just smiled and he just eased away the little thing that he was doing and so on. And, and I loved him in that instant more than ever more than ever because that was who he was, a man of courage, yes. And we also know that because when he died in Canada, he died saying that the show must, must go on. Must go on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my uncle, that was Ronnie Williams that I know. So and this was our private uncle Ron. He was a daddy, some to seven, cousin Randolph to his brothers, and uncle Ron to his brother's children. Unforgettable and always loved. Thank that you was. so very much for painting that picture of Mass Ron. I'm never tired of hearing you talk about him. <laughs> And I feel, you know, by association, <laughs> that I'm related. I've been connected with you long enough. Yes, And yes. I too feel like I'm a part of Mass Rand's life, even though I didn't have the opportunity to get really up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very, very much, Lady Doris Jones, uh, niece of Mass Rand, and pretty much, um, in effect, a child of Mass Rand. Thank you so much for sharing this picture. You've painted such a clear picture of the man, the man for all seasons. And I'm grateful, I'm sorry I wasn't able to meet him up close and personal, but you being here, you've helped myself and the rest of Jamaica um, to really understand a little bit more about him. And I'm grateful to the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission for organizing that we would do this uh, recording so that for Jamaica, for the children of today and the children of generation next and the next generation beyond them that we will have something that we can always go back to we can come back to this moment because you know technology is available to us we can always with a touch of a button we can come back to look at this program watch it and ladies and gentlemen if you are getting benefits you know knowledge benefits from this program about mass ran please drop a word in the chat down below so that the JCDC can understand that we are all grateful for the man and we've really been exposed to the measure of the man and we are grateful to you thank you and keep that smile that rich smile and that rich um, ethos that really delightful persona which I know is part of what you you Inherited. had in the legacy from Masran God bless you and thanks thank you so ladies and gentlemen, there's so much more. Don't go. Please stay with us because there, there is more. 
to learn. Grab your mug of um, chocolate tea and your, your crackers or whatever it is. And let's continue. The gizada. <laughs> The gizada, the dumpling, the gizada, the stagabak, the um, whatever it is that makes you feel good about Jamaica. I'm sure as we're feeling good about Mass Ran, you could grab it and have a moment as we share. Now, Mass Ran's outstanding achievement in the field of entertainment and also in drama earned him a number of awards and commendations. Included among those are the Jamaica Certificate and Badge of Honor in the Queen's New Year's Honors List of 1968, the Institute of Jamaica's Silver Musgrave Medal, 1968, Commander of the Order of Distinction, CD, for Outstanding Services in the Field of Entertainment, 1976, and the Centenary Medal, 1979. The Randy Williams Entertainment Center, of course, stands as a lasting monument to the amazing work of this giant of Jamaica. Let us take a look now as Peter Gay Blake Campbell, educator and JCDC National Awardee of the Parish of Manchester, pays tribute to Mars Ran in her own inimitable style. Enjoy. Story time, story time, story time. Story time, story time, story time. Get your pudding or your coffee tea, or get a dukuno and some cocoa tea. Get a around to dump on the ground cause a story time. Get a around to dump on the Wrong cause a story time. How did do everybody? Yes, Jamaica, oh no, member, until oh, yes, man, on Mars Run. Hey, hey. especially Mars Run. Hey, hey. Oh, remember them fabulous show. We used to go on at the Ronnie Williams Entertainment Center here time. Yes, man. Celebration time. Every year, the best of Jamaica's actors, storytellers, hey, poets, dancers, singers, ah, drummers, and all the artists, them and beauty queen, journalists, and every entertainer used to come around the Williams Entertainment Center and them go up on stage and have to perform on the big old stage because them was the best of the best. Yes, man, everybody. E -e those were the days. But you see this COVID-19 something now. It cause we have to go virtually. But not to worry. Make we go back to the Ronnie Williams Entertainment Center. You know, say, I they so worry per entertainer already announced I get them bus no. Yes, man. Well, a mass run make it happen. Only did no say the Ronnie Williams Entertainment Center did name in Anna of Mass Run. Eh? Yes, man, a matter of fact, I indeed find the Ronnie Williams Youth Club. Yes, man, he found one Ronnie Williams Youth Club. Hey, and he bust a tune. Till he bust enough tune, wally pa tune, a red play pa radio, a hard boat. Yes, man, a uncle Randy that. <laughs> He was a versatile actor. You know, see, at 29 years, he play him acting a pantomime. And he write pantomime show too. Yes, man, man, a big, big actor, writer. Hello, he act all over, you know. Canada, Jamaica, England, you name it, I run it at. I don't know, remember the Miss Lou, I run it, so. <laughs> Miss Lou used to go like she was the boss, you know. But Ronnie it would have turned up to her. <laughs> Although sometimes they'd have to hide behind her back, <laughs> behind her, uh, her skirt. Curtail, but me I tell you, say it was a show that every Jamaican do that you used to look forward to. <laughs> that boy, Ronnie, Ronnie did sweet. 
but him did have sugar, you know. But him was a sweet man. I mean, I never thought he was so sweet, right? The sugar, the <laughs> sugar, the sugar affect him. And him all lose him leg, you know. But him never met that, that have nothing to do with where him half a half a week. Him was a faithful entertainer. Hey, and him entertain with straight up to him death. Him was a writer. I don't know what. He was the king of Janko, no. So today we want to celebrate, Rani. Rani, we salute you. La, Rani, we heal you. Because you is the icon. You is, of course, one of our best, best, best entertainer, best actor, best writer. Rani, 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 the old Jamaica. Salute you. Hey, Jubilee, 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 we celebrate you, Mas Rani. Mas Ran died on August 11, 1980. His final pantomime was the Honorable All Purpose and the Dancing Princess. He left behind an amazing legacy to the theater world. Unfortunately, some of his writings were lost due to um, the papers being affected by one of our hurricanes in the past. So those are lost to us forever. But there are some papers that he left that were um, donated to a university in Canada, I understand. And uh, I do believe that there are still some papers somewhere and hopefully those will be um, probably typed up and put together. put together and published at some point so we can have access to them. On the 25th anniversary of his passing, the Little Theatre Movement held a tribute to the memory of Mas Ran. His life was recalled by the late Mr. Whitcliffe Bennett in a presentation entitled A Man for All Seasons. Reminiscences also came from Roman Catholic priest Monsignor Kenneth McYen, who as a youngster learned his own lessons of Jamaican culture from Mass Ran. Musicologist Marjorie Wiley, who said she first met Rani when she was five years old and later performed with him in the pantomime, radio personality uh, Alma Mokyen, who teamed with him in the groundbreaking serial Morgie and Putus on radio, and Dr. Keith Amiel, who also trod the Ward Theatre stage with Rani, Loy Kelly Miller, read a message from Miss Lou. A selection of songs was performed by men, members of the pantomime company. Video and audio clips of Rani engaged in storytelling and interviews were also presented. And a souvenir poster commemorating the event was presented by the pantomime company's senior member, Faith Buckner, to Mr. Norman Williams, Rani's son, who, along with other members of the Williams family, attended. And just to update you, um, I had asked Mrs. Jones to tell me the names of all the children and she just slipped me a little piece of paper here that has that information i'm going to share it with you so the children um from top to bottom or from yeah. eldest to youngest, eldest to youngest were earl norman janice joan grace and francis and all of them all of them are still alive now on the occasion of mass rand's 100th birthday a commemorative poster exhibition and tribute concert was held on the grounds of the Little Theater. Friends and family once again raised a toast to the memory of Rani Williams and his contribution to Jamaican theater. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a people who see me, you know, the guy simply, you know, <laughs> them don't I travel, you know. <laughs> I travel far, man, cross all the wall, all the waters, man. Oh, yes, I travel across Hope River and all that. Oh, yes. And, <laughs> and I want to tell you, too, I went to London. Oh, London.
this is a beautiful city. But you know what impressed me most in London? The children. Oh, the English children. Bright. Bright. Oh, English children. <laughs> the smallest little child you walk up in England speaks English. Yes. So one day I was out at Piccadilly, you know, um, looking for the circus. So um, while I stand up there, you know, first time I go to the country, so I'm uh, looking up on the buildings, you know, looking up, and all of a sudden I hear a little crying. So when I look down, I see a little English child, man. I, I, I said to her, little child, what's wrong with you? She said, oh, sir, I, I lost my threepence. I was so surprised at you. Big little English guy like you stand up into Piccadilly, drop drop and say you're making this big ball. I'm surprised at you. Say I'm a Jamaican. Yeah, uh, we're, we're generous people. Yes, uh, and I said, don't cry. I pushed me in my pocket and I took out the last fip I have. I, and I handed it to her. I said, now, little child, another thing about we Jamaicans is we like to give advice. Now I'm going to give you a little advice. Now, as a small child, you must not cry. For all children who cry, while they're small, when they grow big, they become very ugly. Now, remember that. Don't cry now, or when you grow big, you'll be a very ugly girl. She says, oh, thank you, sir. And I got to move off. And she said, <laughs> excuse me, sir, but when you were a little kid, you must have wept bitterly. Although Mas Ran accomplished much in his lifetime, his greatest accomplishment of all was his great love for the people of Jamaica whom he served outside of entertainment. He was a social worker, a Jamal worker, and Jamal, of course, being the Jamaica Movement for the Advancement of Adult Literacy worker. He was founder of the Rani Williams Youth Club, as his niece told us, and a regular on the Nuggets for the Needy show. I remember that. I remember it. Giving his time for free so that monies could be raised for persons who needed the support of the community and country. Mas Ran was a holistic man, if I can use that word. He had a joyful heart. He had a great big smile. He had a heart of love for Jamaica, for Jamaican culture, for the people of Jamaica. And today, it is our privilege and our pleasure to salute Jamaican icon, the late, great Randolph Samuel Williams. Mass Ran. Putus, Rani, man pon spot, a man for all seasons, and uh, everything else that we know about him. Please help me to wish him in absentia a bonununus, bonununus, bonununus happy birthday. This production was brought to you by the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission in Manchester. Let's keep remembering Masran. Mr. Captain. Mr. Captain Morgan, thank you for tuning in and remember what good, my friend. What is this? Masran standing up in the middle of his blue banana, he's surrounded by banana up to him waist. It is not up to him waist, it's up to him knee. What a way of flavor banana, boy. Liza. Do not interfere with Masran. But how him find himself in his new banana eat? He must be interfere with. No, he is not in a good mood. Leave him out. And not leaving him out. Right, Miss Lou, don't you see the now they find interfere with him? My son, all I want is to get him out of my heap of banana without even one finger of my banana blues. If interference will get him out, interference him. <laughs>